71% of ultramarathon runners reported a foot or ankle injury in the previous 12 months. I was browsing around PubMed this morning doing some research for a different episode that I'm working on, which I got distracted by this particular statistic, which was in one of the abstracts. And that's because it's a really high number, right? So three quarters of ultra runners were reporting a foot or ankle injury in the previous 12 months. So I had to give it a read. Turns out that these ultra runners were only running on average about 40k a week. So they're not doing like really, really high volume training. And also the, the most common injuries that they were reporting were plantar fasciitis, which is an extremely common running injury and Achilles tendonitis. So they're the two big ones. And then the other ones were like generalized foot pain of some type and uh, stress fractures of the one of the bones in the foot. And so I want to chat a little bit about this study, what it said, what it found, and also what we can take away to apply to our own running if we want to try and help avoid getting a foot or ankle injury, help try and avoid getting a stress fracture, Achilles tendonitis, or plantar fasciitis in the foot in the next 12 months for us. So a couple of things that they touched on in the study, and that is very much the case when I've interacted with runners over the last 20 years, is that when you ask runners, what they think led up to their injury if they've got plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, or some sort of stress fracture in the foot, they'll usually attribute it to having flat feet if they do have flat feet. And a lot of runners think they have flat feet when they don't. And those who do have flat feet think it's a problem. And then the other one is tightness, not stretching enough. So usually that's more so with the Achilles tendon pain. People who get a t Achilles tendonitis, so pain in the Achilles tendon, tend to think it's because they didn't stretch enough because it feels tight. Like if you've ever had pain in your Achilles, it feels kind of tight. So it's kind of intuitive that a lack of stretching or a lack of flexibility led to the problem in the first place. So it's kind of reasonable that runners will believe that tightness, I think if I hadn't had the, you know, the educational background I had, I would think that I have pain in my Achilles, it's probably because it's tight. It's not, but I don't want to spoil the end. And then the other thing with um, plantar fasciitis or one of the stress fracture things, people often attribute those pains to having like flat feet, to having lower arches, more pronation. They're, they're some of the words that people would use. And this tends to be viewed as a kind of bad thing. And having flat arches is kind of worse than having regular arches or high arches. And so in this study, what they did is they surveyed. So they just asked questions. They didn't uh, like directly test these runners, but they surveyed 730 ultramarathon runners and they were asking them about their injury history. So had they had any kind of injury to their foot, uh, you know, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, stress fractures in the last 12 months. And then they also asked them some other stuff about their training habits and beliefs to try and identify connections between the two and see where these runners believe these problems were coming from and if that was actually true. So they wanted to look at a couple of the variables they were looking at in particular is, is it more common for people to get plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis or stress fractures? Was that more common if they had uh, flat arches, if they had flat feet? Was it more common if they were less flexible or if they didn't stretch often? Did these things make it more likely that you would get an injury in your foot or ankle if you had those problems? And the way they classified an injury was actually quite generous. So they said any injury or pain in the foot and ankle that led to you missing a few training days, that counts as an injury, right? So that's, I think, why the statistic of three quarters of the running, uh, sorry, of the runners having an injury was so high, because that's quite a low bar, right? So that would put both that, that would categorize two situations as an injury one where you have Achilles tendonitis that's so bad you can't run for six months and you miss your whole season that would be an injury and another person gets a bit of pain in their Achilles after their long run and they decide to rest for the following week and then they go back to training and it's fine they would both be classified as an injury and wouldn't be differentiated but obviously the impact of those two situations is very different. And I talk about this often is that one of the goals we have for our runners is to make them as strong and resilient, as robust as we can, so that when they inevitably do get injured, the impact of those injuries is small. We're making small adjustments to their training schedules and not having ginormous impact on their overall training season. And so what they found in these runners, you know, lots of them got plantar fasciitis, lots of them got Achilles tendonitis, lots of them got stress fractures. 
There didn't seem to be any connection or correlation between those who had flat feet. They were no more likely to get an injury in their foot or ankle than those who didn't have flat feet. Didn't seem to make any difference. Also, the less flexible runners, so they got them to do a, like a, a test where you kind of bend over and touch your toes. And the ones who were like tighter, they weren't more likely to get injured than those who were kind of more flexible. Same with those who were stretching regularly. They weren't less likely to get injured than those who weren't stretching regularly. So they just didn't find any connection between flat feet or stretching slash flexibility and developing an injury. And this is very much in the same vein as a lot of research I've read in this area, that there isn't a direct connection between having flat feet and getting injured more often, and that there isn't an um, obvious benefit of being more flexible or stretching frequently if you want to reduce the likelihood or occurrence of running injuries. So this is more evidence to suggest that um, we shouldn't be attributing everything to lack of flexibility. We shouldn't be putting loads of our energy into doing lots and lots of stretching if our goal is to reduce injury risk. And that if you have flat feet, you shouldn't be so worried about it because you don't seem to be more likely to get injured than those who don't have flat feet. Now, the, the trick is here, what can we take away that we should do, right? So what advice would I give these 730 ultra runners if they want to try and make sure that they don't get injured in the next 12 months, that they don't get Achilles tendonitis or plantar fasciitis or some sort of stress fracture in their foot. And the the interesting thing here is if you look at this study, we can't glean much information about what to do from these guys because what they're doing is not working, right? So three quarters of them are getting injuries in their foot and ankle. We don't necessarily want to model what they're doing to try and prevent them because they're not having a lot of success. But for me, and this isn't based on direct evidence, but it's more I'll talk through my reasoning for it. The biggest thing I would say is strengthen your calves. Make sure your calf muscles have as much strength, power, and endurance in as you can possibly stuff into them. That is your best protection, I believe, from getting Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, or any kind of stress fracture in your foot. So my primary reasoning behind that is that if you look at the distribution of the workload when we're running, the muscles below the knee, so the muscles of the lower leg, do the majority of the work. So when we're running, about 50% of the work is done by the muscles below the knee. That's primarily a calf muscle. Then in the thigh area, we get about 30% of the work of when we're running being done by muscles in the thigh area. So that's primarily the quadriceps and the hamstring. And then up around the hip and trunk, it's only about 20%. So I think core and glutes. Okay, so let me go through that again. So we've got core and glutes, 20%, hams and quads, 30%, calf, 50%. So if you are going to increase by 10% the muscular strength and power in any of the muscles of your legs, which one do you think would be the best place to get that 10% increase in strength? Bearing in mind that if you increase your calf strength by 10%, that's doing 50% of the work when you're running. Versus if you increase your core or glute strength by 10%, <laughs> that area is only responsible for 20% of the work being done when you're running. And what you might notice that in comparison to the advice you typically hear from influencers and online and just the general emphasis of strength training for runners advice out there, it's kind of flipped, right? The majority of it is saying strengthen your core, strengthen your glutes. A little bit of it is, is focused on like quads and hamstrings with like lunges and stuff. And then pretty much nobody talks about the calf. And why is that? Well, I think there's a pretty obvious reason because calf raises are boring. They're boring to do, they're boring to look at, and there's not very many variations of them. So whereas if you take the core and the glutes and the upper leg, there's like a bajillion different variations of exercises you could do with them. So some of the popular ones would be squats, deadlifts, Split squats, rear lunges, step ups, clams, uh, <laughs> single leg deadlifts, hack squats, leg presses, side planks with leg lifts. Oh, I'm blanking because I've tried to think of it more. Every Pilates exercise is basically a core or a glute exercise, right? So there's kind of a bajillion different exercises you could do for that upper part of your kinetic chin. If we come down to the calf, we have a calf raise with the leg straight. We have a bent leg calf raise with the leg bent. And we have a seated calf raise when you're sitting. That's it. 
So it's very difficult to make interesting content about that. So you don't see a lot of different kind of fancy exercises for car phrases online. When you're looking for this stuff, it's not promoted very heavily in strength programs designed quote unquote for runners. And the other thing about it is not only is it boring to kind of watch and create content around, it's also boring to do, right? Having had done hundreds of thousands, if not millions of car phrases in my life to this point, I can happily attest to the fact that they are extremely boring and nobody wants to do. But what I would compel you to do and the 730 ultra runners involved in this study, if any of them happen to be listening, is to make sure that if you want to help protect yourself from plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, stress fractures in your foot, or if you've had any of those injuries or are trying to get over those injuries, the very best lever for you to pull on is your calf strength. Calf strength, power, and endurance, that is going to give you your best bang for buck in terms of protecting yourself or recovering from those injuries. It doesn't have to be complicated. Ideally, you're going to do one version with your leg straight and one version with your leg bent. So let's say a straight leg calf raise, standing on one leg, holding a heavy weight, and doing four sets of eight reps. So at the gym the other day, I was doing four sets of eight reps. I was standing on the edge of the step with my knee straight on one leg holding a 35 pound dumbbell and I did four sets of eight, right? The other thing you could do is go heavier. So use for me, it might be like a 50 or 60 pounder and doing five sets of five. But the key here is you want it to be heavy and you don't want to be able to do more than 10 reps. If you can do lots of reps, it means you're getting more into endurance. We want to focus more on strength and power. And I would advise that you do that every strength session you do if you're only going once or twice a week. If you're going three times a week, still, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to do those exercises three times a week. But you want to be hitting them at least once a week, ideally twice, for most of the weeks of the year. Yes, that's a lot of car phrases. Yes, they are very boring. <laughs> if you have a seated car phrase at your gym, use it. If you have a leg press at your gym, you can do like the bent leg car phrase on those. Google it. There's a million YouTube videos that show you how to do each of those exercises. And the key here is this is the boring work. This is the boring work that you have to do to protect yourself to be able to do things like ultra marathons, marathons, half marathons. I would even argue 10K, that kind of thing. They're only doing 40K a week, these runners who are getting injured at a rate of 71% in their foot and ankle. So it's really important that you protect yourself from that. And one of the best ways that you can do that is to invest in calf strength for now and for the rest of your running career. And the only way to do that is to do the calf raises, do the boring calf raises, do the boring work. Now, if you're stuck and you are maybe an ultra runner or any kind of runner and you have Achilles tendonitis or plantar fasciitis or you've had some sort of stress fracture or stress reaction in your foot, if you don't feel like you're getting anywhere and what I'm saying today is resonating and doesn't sound like a lot what you like what you've been trying, then we can definitely help you. Now, strength work and car phrases are obviously not the only variable here. There are other things that we would need to look at, such as your technique, your training habits, um, the structural resilience and integrity of the Achilles and plantar fascia and all of this kind of stuff. However, car phrases and strength and power are going to be a big part of it. Anyway, I don't want to get too much into that rabbit hole, but if you are stuck and you would like some help, as always, just click the link in the description and book a free call.